Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with hosts Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please look us up on your favorite podcast app, subscribe, like, and share so that you never miss an episode. If you'd like to further support us, visit patreon.com slash speaking out and check out the different rewards. You'll find exclusive rewards if you sign up as a patron of the podcast. Thank you for your support and let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast. Thank you as always to our patrons who make the podcast possible. And as a reminder, if you would like to sign up, go to patreon.com slash speaking out, check out the different tiers. And we just finished a recording. Yes, we did. Uh, not a recording. We <clears throat> finished a live yes. uh, that we did with our patrons for the live Q&A we do once a month. Uh, we had some very robust discussion. Uh, and uh, Tuesday, December 20th, we are doing a live training session. We do once a month a live Zoom training session Excuse on me, abuse. Gonna... Granny's shrinking over here. I know. On, Hi. On, uh, there, we got it. We got it. On abuse okay. prevention. Uh, those trainings are only available on patreon.com slash speaking out. So that is those just for our patrons. trainings are amazing, by the way. Our interactions they are very good. with our patrons are super. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Absolutely. Really so sign up. Um, <clears throat> and in the process, yes. you'll be supporting our podcast yes. and keeping it going. All right. Um, where is the church headed? We're ending uh, 2020, 2022. I was just going <laughs> to say 2020. Uh, we don't want to go back to 2020. Uh -uh. Oh, good Lord. Um, we're, we're ending 2022, uh, we're going to be entering into a new year. And so the question is, where is the church headed? Uh, what's going on? And I am in full-time ministry. So this is, um, something that certainly I am seeing and feeling some major effects of what's going on, uh, across the United States for sure. Um, and so the church is in decline. Um, that's probably no secret. Uh, there is a major preacher shortage. That's probably not a surprise. Um, and so what's going on and where is the church headed? I think a lot of people are probably jumping up and down on the sidelines and they're excited that the church is in decline. I hear this a lot within the advocacy community that Churches need to shut their doors because if that happens, the, you know, a lot less kids will be abused. I actually radically disagree with that. Um, abuse is everywhere. I think we need to be real. I think we need to be honest. Uh, while abuse is definitely rampant in the church, and, and it, it, it's actually embarrassing um, how rampant it is in the church, um, abuse happens everywhere. It happens in schools. It happens in um, daycares. It happens everywhere. It happens in homes. Absolutely. I mean, yes. let's be real. Yeah, it's, right. it's all over the place. Right. So shutting churches down um, does not solve any problem. Trust me on that. So we're going to kind of talk about where, uh, you know, where we see it headed, but um, I want to talk about what's going on right now within the church. And I think right now the church and our culture at large is in um, complete confusion, and I think it's bleeding out. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, like I mentioned, we have this preacher shortage. Um, nobody wants to go into ministry. Uh, people people who've been in ministry forever are leaving. Um, and there's just a lot going on. It's not just the churches. I just saw a thing on the news this morning where somebody um, who's in the military was talking about how the military is facing this massive mm -hmm. shortage. And they're like, we are so <clears throat> shorthanded right now that we can't afford to go to war. And I thought, that that's, I've never heard that in that's my lifetime. No. Um, right. We have always had mm -hmm. a strong military. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our military has dwindled down uh, to next to nothing, and that's where you have incredible structure. Uh, you have full-time recruiters. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I, I remember recruiters coming to school oh, yeah. and constantly. Sure. And... Um, we had recruitment offices all over the place. You know, it, it would be nothing to have multiple recruitment centers for the military in your town. Uh, the shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Remember, every time oh, you went yeah. to the mall, as soon as you walk <clears throat> in, you'd see mm -hmm. recruiters. It was a big thing. And in the schools, you're right, Jimmy. 
recruiters visited often. Constantly. Yeah. And probably Quite still often. do, to be honest, but that's where we're at. You know, there's this major shortage. Everybody's short-handed, short-staffed uh, in the workforce. Uh, my wife feels it at her job. They are wildly understaffed um, in an industry where they need to continue. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, preschool, well, honestly, daycare. Yeah, wherever you go, there are signs posted, help needed. Mm -hmm. Walmart, yeah. the supermarkets, the deli department, the bakery department, yep. um, sale, any sales store, um, you, McDonald's, mm -hmm. all, you know, used to be, my goodness gracious, you crossed your fingers and hoped you could get a job. Now, I bet if I tried to get another job by the end of one day, I, I would be hired someplace. Yeah, absolutely. Hired, even at my age. I mean, I know absolutely. I would. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I, I think there are just a lot of people in confusion right now, and, and COVID certainly didn't help. I think that exasperated a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's kind of this spiraling effect that's happening right now where people don't know. We're kind of uncertain what's going on with the economy. Actually, today was a was – uh, we're recording on the 13th. Um, kind of a big day. The CPI uh, numbers came out uh, indicating uh, kind of where – Inflation is where inflation sits mm -hmm. at the year end. We have um, the balancing of our federal budget uh, happening this week. Uh, we have the, the next federal rate hike uh, decision is tomorrow, the FOMC. You know, we have all this stuff going on and all this uncertainty, the mm -hmm. uncertainty in the markets, uncertainty in the churches, uncertainty in the workforce. Right. All over the place, there's just this massive amount of confusion. And you're seeing that in so many different areas, schools, look at schools, oh, yeah. what's happening. Uh, and, and, and all of this, chaos. yeah, uh, just <clears throat> schools trying to figure out how to rebrand and how to, you know, all of their sensitivity training and all, you know, just such bizarre stuff oh, yeah. where schools used to teach math and science and reading. And now they've Not become anymore. now they've become oh, yeah. specialists, so-called specialists <clears throat> in every mm -hmm. stinking area. And I think it's just there's this massive confusion going on. Okay, so I, you know, I'm not lamenting that. I'm just saying that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Um. The second point that that we want to make is that it seems like I've seen this trend for years now, but I think we're kind of at at, at, at this tipping point where people don't even realize this, but the only thing they know how to articulate is what they are against. I'm smiling because that's so true. We hear anti this, anti that, anti this, mm -hmm. anti that. When you ask people, what do you believe in? What do you stand for? They're blank. Yeah. Pe people literally, they blank. legitimately don't know anymore. No. Just um, blank. And I forgot what Sarah McDougall um, called it the other day. Um, I, I had commented, she had commented on a post of mine, and then I, you know, we were kind of back and forth. And um, I think she called it confusion fatigue or something like that, and where people are so, <clears throat> they're so confused because there are such mixed messages in our media right now. Not just media. I mean, they're certainly not the ones to blame. It, it's It's everywhere. But I, I think that that was the term that she used was this confusion it's fatigue. It's a good term. Where people are just so tired of being confused. Right. Um, a very where good term. Science used to be, uh, at least was labeled that way as, mm -hmm. as black and white. And now it, it became, science became so political where if you don't, if you even begin to question something, it's, it's you know, labeled as misinformation. And, it's, and we're finding from, you know, and... Uh, I'm neither pro nor con Elon Musk, but I got to tell you, I'm actually sitting back and, and and watching him release these secret files from Twitter, and I'm like, kind of mad respect for the guy. Like there was so mm -hmm. much bull crap mm -hmm. going on yeah. behind lot, closed doors yeah. with the so-called science that mm -hmm. was out there uh, that you were told if you if you don't go along with with whatever it is, mm -hmm. that you are anti-science, <clears throat> that you are a science denier, that you are, you know, on and on and on and on and on. And it's just gotten to the point where I think people are experiencing confusion fatigue. Um, people 
only know what they're against. They don't know mm -hmm. what they're for anymore. And there used to be a time where we knew oh, point yes. blank. You could ask, yeah. what do you stand for? It, as Whatever. As a Christian, what do you stand for? Well, I stand for whatever, world peace and, you know, uh, feeding the hungry. And, uh, you know, I stand for this. People don't know anymore. They're, they're like, you ask that question, what do you stand for? And people legitimately don't know. I'm just shaking my head because things have changed so much in my lifetime. I have seen, you know, in when I went to school, for instance, we began the day with prayer, the flag salute, you know, and now those are totally, that, that's unheard of. Mm -hmm. That's how we began the day. Think about that. Yeah. Um, and we had a political, not a political, a patriarchal song that we sang. Mm -hmm. We, that's how our day began. And it was a very organized day. You, you know, learned your lessons. You went out, you played, you exercised mm -hmm. your body. You had a prayer at lunch. You had a snack. You had a nap time. You know, all of that. Now, the structure of life is gone, I think. Not only that, I, I but the, the decorum. Think about the decorum for the flag. It used to be I, oh, you put your hand yeah, over your heart, yeah. you stand, you take your yes. hat off. And you were so proud you say of the, that. You say the Pledge of Allegiance yes. and you sing the National Anthem. And right. now, now it's like... Do we say the pledge or do we not? Do we use the name um, in oh, God or do we not? Um, do we stand during the national anthem or do we kneel? Do we, you know, and there, like I said, there's this com confusion That's fatigue. even with that little segment. Of uh, and life. it's everywhere. It's, it's in every over. aspect of life yeah. now. It is, Jimmy. And you're so right. Do I go electric or gas combustion? Mm. <laughs> I'll think about <laughs> You know, it. like yeah. that's a yeah. big, uh, honestly, mm -hmm. there, there's just so much. That people are like, well, if I if I drive a combustion mm -hmm. engine, then I must hate the planet Earth, and I must be for fracking, and I must be I must be a bad person, and you know what I mean? Like, there's just, I do know what you everybody mean. knows yeah. what people stand against. They don't mean. know what they stand for. It's hard right now. Yeah, it's just very hard right now. There's no more black and white. Everything seems to be mm -hmm. a gray smudge, um, even right down to, and I'll say it, down to gender, gender identity. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, um, it, I, I see it as even in young kids now who are questioning, you know, I don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. I, I don't know what I am. And so there's nothing that is solid, yeah. fixed. Sure, um, we've done away with that, and it's a very sad, sad way to live. Well, it's in every it's aspect of life. Ground. It really is. Yeah, like this, it is. The, there's no part of life now that's that's untouched. Well, think about it. What by food this is good to eat? Do I use the keto diet? Do I use the Mediterranean diet? Do I eat organic foods? Do I eat? That was something with it's... with my sister because of um, my niece's oh, yeah. her, her allergy, egg allergies, yeah. and I was like. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not supposed to give a, a kid eggs until they're two years old, and she said, "Oh no, that's that's change. That's old." Change. She's like, "Now, yeah. now it's like, I forget what, like six or eight months yeah. or something." Yeah. And I'm like, and "Even that, you ev know, everything, just, everything's changed. Everything has it changed really, and really is changing." Has. Yeah. Really so has. you know, I, I again, you know, I'm not. We're not pointing fingers or fingers at people. We're just saying, yeah. like, this is currently. The situation where I think a lot of people find themselves in, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even realize it, and so there's this, there's this massive, massive confusion, and so for the people who are against the church, for the people who say, well, I'm against the church because you know there's so much abuse in the church, and every church needs to close its door, then the problem of abuse will will at least be better. No, it won't. Trust me, no. it won't. Um, <clears throat> that's not the problem. Don't just know what you stand against. Know what you stand mm -hmm. for. And so that kind of brings us to our third and most important point is that there are people doing the hard thing. Mm -hmm. um, we just, as we mentioned in our, in our intro, we just had, I think, one of the best Q&As that we've done. And that was our, I'm looking at the calendar. Oh, I don't have the number on there. I think it was our 38th 
live Q&A that we've done since we, since we started it Patreon. That might have been the best one yet. Yeah, it was great. Um, the discussion and the real raw emotions yeah, of our patrons. Great. Uh, just being honest and saying, I can't, you know, I can't step foot in a church right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, other ones. It's been, it took me eight years to step foot back inside a church mm-hmm. again. Um, I have one foot in the church and the other foot, you know, I'm like kind of testing the waters kind of thing. You know, we have mm-hmm. people yeah. all over the place. But what I found interesting and, and inspiring, to be honest, is that our patrons are saying we want training, whether we have one mm-hmm. foot in the church, zero feet in the church, or both feet in the church, we want training to make church and really essentially mm-hmm. everywhere, schools, daycares, you name it, we want to make them safer. safer. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, it's and really I think it really is. that message needs to be shouted from the rooftops to say there are people putting in the the legwork, the hours. I mean, it's not easy. It's <clears> not <throat> easy to get it. trained. <clears throat> you can't go to a to a three hour training and be like, all right, now I know what to look for and you know, I'm gonna report well abuse set. and yeah. We're a safe place. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. And, um, you know, abusers are incredibly dynamic and they're, they're just so skilled and so professional at what they do. Um, it, it doesn't, you don't get a simple quick training and then, and then everybody's safe. So you have to put in the hard work. You have to put in hours and hours and hours and, I mean, tens of hours and sometimes hundreds of hours of training and experience right. To actually begin to recognize it and know how to respond and mm-hmm. know how to intervene, <clears throat> and, you know, it's hard work, and people are putting the work in. I, was gonna I say, love it's that hard work. I love people it. are doing it yeah. and doing it voluntarily, doing it of their own time and expense in this crazy world of confusion and unknowns. Yeah, there's so much good still happening. Yeah, and we need to remember that we really, really do. Absolutely. Um, I, we're, it's, it's like we're living on such shaky ground anymore. <clears throat> it, nothing feels solid. Is that a good way of putting it? I think so, yeah. For I, a lot uh, of yeah, people. absolutely. For a lot of people. And then we have people such as we heard from this morning earlier who are saying, yes, but I'm still going to go ahead and move forward and do what I know is the right thing. Yeah. But I... I I may not have it all together. I may not have everything, every answer, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to and I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to yeah. do it now. Yeah, I'm, I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. And I think, yeah, I think that again, that's those are the messages that we need to hear. Um, because, to me, the, the again, the problem is not. It's not the church, like shutting the and, and no. I, I think it's almost an insult to be honest to say well. Churches just need to close their doors. They need to be banned and close the doors permanently. To me, it's just an insult, and it, and I think it it kind of throws it throws egg at at the people who are already hurting and struggling. And and I think the church definitely needs to have a massive restructuring. And I think you know I'm not naive. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, in fact, we said in, in right. our uh, live Q&A, it's mm. probably not going to happen in our lifetime. <clears throat> this is going to be a very long, tedious, um, just process. stripping it's, it's a down process. a broken right. structure right. and rebuilding. And, and, you know, but we have to have people willing to put the work into it. And when we do that, no longer will we have this massive confusion where people only tell you what they're against. Well, that offends me. Like I, if I had a dollar for how many times I've heard that in the church, when I hear this, this offends me, what I hear in my head, and you're going to kind of laugh, but what I hear is, it offends me. Like that's what I hear in my head. Cause I've heard it so many yeah. times and I'm like, who yeah. cares what yeah. offends you? Like, tell me what you stand for. Like mm-hmm. what, what are you doing to make a difference in this world and to make it safer and better and happier? And, more pleasant for people. I don't want to hear what offends you. When we're focused on looking ahead and doing something positive, 
we don't hear those offensive little things. They, they no longer Where it doesn't exist. affect you. Doesn't it has no control no, over you. No, and, not and so, at all. Yeah, like, not at all. You can be called a, you know, a bigot and yeah. a, you know, whatever, like, you name it. it it's it's gotten so... It doesn't matter. So stupid. Um, yes. <laughs> there's no other word for it. But, yeah, the, like, that stuff doesn't bother you anymore. And you're like, you know, sticks and stones, I'm going to keep it's, moving it's forward. Because I know what I stand for. Yeah. I say that at work all the time. I have some at work who tattletale on each other and whatnot. <laughs> and I'll say, uh -huh. I didn't know we were back in kindergarten. My wife I, has the same yeah. problem. It's like, when, yeah. when did we drop back to kindergarten? Yeah. Are we adults? You know. So-and-so yeah. said this. Yes. Yeah. So? <laughs> Do your job. Exactly my message. <laughs> exactly my message. Uh, you know? But we've done that with the church. Yeah, the church is flawed. Every oh, it's badly broken. Everything, yeah, it's it's badly broken. Is flawed, but we don't just disregard or do away with. It. And I think that's where we've gotten into trouble with the family, with marriage. Think think about mm -hmm. it. Sure, there are flaws in every home, in every marriage, in every relationship. You don't just plow that under and say, okay, it doesn't work. No more marriage. No more. Look at the trouble we've gotten into because we veered from what is right and good. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. It's, it's like, and with the church, why would we consider it a, a good thing to shut the doors of the church when the church works right? <clears throat> Think of the strength we get from that. Well, and you got Think people the working good. together. Same with our military. Think yeah. when when they're I, doing I when do everybody's like working together, that, and right. you know now it's all about sensitivity training, and you know like just this weird, bizarre crap where you know again, mm -hmm. uh, not saying that we don't need to be sensitive to people because trust me, I've done trainings for the military. Like sexual harassment and abuse within the military is rampant. So, you know th they definitely need they need training, um, and they need to be sensitive to to people who think or live differently than they do. Uh, I'm all for compassion. Trust me. Um, no matter what you believe or how you live or, you know, uh, like we need to treat people as equals. I am 100% for that. But, you know, when that becomes your focus and that's your only focus um, and, and people are People are dying, and look at what's happening to our veterans um, here in the United States, and the homeless crisis, and the drug addiction. Everything's and, escalated. Yeah, you know, we're at a critical areas, tipping right. point in right. just about every aspect of life, and so wouldn't it be better if you knew, if people knew what you stood for? And you know, I think about this um, in our in our own little church. Like we've struggled with it. I've heard so many times what people are against. Well, I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm leaving mm -hmm. the church because of this. You don't do this or you do this or whatever. I know I could, I could fill books full of stuff that I know just in our own little church, what people are against. I always used to say when personalities are involved, you're going to have that. Yeah. Um, I can remember back when I was a minister's wife, people saying, if you sing that song one more time, I will not come back yeah, to church. Yeah, I, I, I've heard it Just, too. Yeah. I hate that song. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, same thing. I won't come yes. back. Okay. If then your that's sermon your choice. isn't cut back by 10 minutes, I will not set foot through this door. Mm -hmm. Things like that. And I'm thinking, really mm -hmm. is that where your focus is it's, yeah but it's been for time evermore when you think yeah about it. but i think you know when 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 you work together and we're seeing this again with with our congregation um we're seeing the flip side of that mm -hmm. when you know when you do know what you stand for and i think we're at a point where you know most people really do um we have things like you know we we just raised our third um, $7,500 to drill a well in a developing nation where they are absolutely desperate for clean water. Um, a tiny little church. Think about and, that. That's, that's amazing. And every, really t every, all amazing. three times that we've done it <clears throat> three years in a row now, we have not gone. I think this was the longest that it took us, but we, we got a little bit, uh, lax with it because we were just so busy, but, 
Um, I think this time it took like 45 days start to finish. That's but crazy but the first good. two times, that's crazy. In good. under 30 days, it. we had our full 7,500 dollars raised, and that money was sent off to Healing Hands International, and they're out. All right, we're going to get our drill rig ready, wow. and we're going to drill. Yeah. Um, wow. And then they send us the. Uh, the updated pictures and videos and, you know, give us GPS coordinates for where the well is so we can look at it on, on satellite view. You know, that that's what happens when people know what they stand for. Mm -hmm. When they know what they stand for and link arms and work towards that, mm -hmm. we form a mighty wall, a mighty force. We really yeah. do. And Absolutely. it's beautiful. It truly is. If we focus that way within the church against abuse just think of what could be accomplished mm -hmm. rather than thinking about well i can't stand the church uh i can't stand any of the leaders i don't like what's being done it's broken yeah. it's it's wrong um, it's you know right. it's this it's that <clears throat> and that all might be true and 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 probably really honestly is true but the question is what are you doing about what it do we do with um that? right just walking away and leaving and being like yep there's no hope mm -hmm. for it that, that that's that's just not true and we're yeah. seeing that. Um, we're seeing what happens when people come together in our little congregation. I'm telling you, it's such a beautiful thing when you see people come together and you see them link mm -hmm. arms and you see them work yeah. and they know what they stand yes. for. There's no, like, if you ask people at, at our church, I'll bet you anybody can say, well, we're for, um, we're for helping people who are in need. Mm -hmm. We're for standing up to abuse. Um we're for linking arms with people and just working hard to make the world a better, safer place where people are fed and clothed and taken care of. Just doing something That's that it. simple, that basic gives us purpose. Mm -hmm. Think about that. When we're in a state of confusion, yeah. we, we don't have purpose. You know, we, because we, you're worried about the next thing that you're going to be offended by. Right. We or that's wrong. Or that. Or that. You have no purpose when we have purpose, when we have goals, when we know what we want in life, what we want to do, there's no stopping us. Yeah, and I absolutely. Love that. I love that. And that's so true of God's church, too. Mm -hmm. And you and I have both stressed time and time and time again, yes, there are terrible churches. There really are. But there are Tons equally... As wonderful, good, caring, safe churches also. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what we need to strive for. Well, and for the ones that aren't, too, you know, I, 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 it goes back to, um, I'll never forget when we had some problematic people at our church, and I was so, I like, I was beyond fed up and just worn out, tired, run down, uh, tired of fighting, tired of being alone, tired of people not standing beside us um you know and and i remember i literally had a letter of resignation and i was like i was fully prepared to walk in and just hand that letter slap it down and be like i'm done i'm i'm out of here <clears throat> yeah i'm out yeah um that would have been the easy thing to do uh easier thing to do not easy but easier and my wife looked at me and she goes, you know what? Why should we be the ones to leave? Mm -hmm. She goes, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready to dig my heels in and I'm not going anywhere. I said, you know what? You're right. And, that and right. that's, yeah. that was a turning point, mm -hmm. um, for our congregation because we stood up to, we knew what we stood for. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, so we believed important. in the people. We believed in the church. We believed in, um, uh, in ministry. We believed in, uh, moving in a direction where we help people, and and you know, and that's about the time that we started doing uh, raising the support for these wells, and you know, and on and on and on, and we're just we're accomplishing tremendous things um, that we never did before. Just that one thing, Jimmy, that well, one well a year. Mm -hmm. Think of how many people that touches. Oh, it's it's Think, it's into the and thousands. It's done in the name of God. Mm -hmm. um, in the name of, you know, blessed through your church. Just think of the seeds that have been planted mm -hmm. at fresh every yeah. year with that. 
and how many people are being cared for with that. If we that that's when we focus on one thing, mm -hmm. um, and not something that's broken, but just focus on doing one positive thing. I'm a yeah. firm believer in that. I always have been. Yeah, I definitely am too. And it, you know, so uh, I'm I'm hopeful, and it's not a naive um, hopeful because I do. I I think it's going to take decades to to move the church from where it is now to a place where it stops inviting abusers in. It stops mm -hmm. being welcoming of, of of abusers, and it stops um, mistreating its own people. Uh, I look at people within the church have been so spiritually abused. Um, it, it's not even funny. And so, you know, I, I think to move away from that is going to take a tremendous amount of pain and time and energy and effort. And uh, there are going to be a lot more losses in the church. Um, and, and I fully expect that and mm -hmm. know that it's going to happen. Um, you know, when big forest fires sweep through, and just acres upon acres upon acres of uh, timber are destroyed, animals are destroyed mm -hmm. and all that. But then what happens when that begins to spring back? Think about it. Comes back all stronger and better. and growth, yeah. yeah. Comes back just strong, firm, and beautiful, fresh and mm -hmm. new. That's how I see the church. Yeah, if you listen right. to scientists too, like they talk about how um, forest fires are absolutely essential to the They're ecosystem. Exactly right. They're necessary. They're necessary. Right. Um, if you really yeah. want to have a strong ecosystem, like part of California, what's happening out there and, and has been for years is they never do controlled burns. Right. Controlled burns yep. are, are absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. Ab yes. And I always think of that because... You know, we've ha we had a fire at the house before, just in, not in the field, but in the side yard there where fire got out of control. And when I think of what happened, it was all parched and black and ashes <clears throat> the first year. But then when growth started growing up, I have the most beautiful flowers that mm -hmm. are growing in there now. Yeah. And the, the trees that have grown up in there are amazing. Mm -hmm. They're strong. They're deeply rooted. Um, the rest of the woods surrounding that hasn't burned, those trees flop over, they're weak, they're, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think what's happening to the churches is that fire is sweeping through, is going to get rid of all the things that don't need to be in the church that are causing harm, and the new growth is going to be firm, firmly mm -hmm. planted in the truth. Uh, the church is going to uproot and be as it should be. I remain totally hopeful of, of the church. Yeah, I, I mean, I do, do too. And I, like I said, is it's going to take it's going to take a long time, and it it's going to take people who are willing to step up and do the hard thing and to, to get trained and trained well. And you know, but but there are people doing it. There are people doing it right now. And I wish, I wish, wish, wish we heard more of these stories right. of people who are you know know like, what they stand like our patrons. for yeah, and they're, they're, are they're, doing it absolutely. Yes. Um, yes. It's it's magnificent to see mm -hmm. and oh if that is uh, I don't hope know. I don't know what is yeah I I, th yeah. I think I think we'll see that trajectory begin to change but um, but it is you know I I think there's going to be a lot of loss in the process um, but any it, change it'll happen. that is good is full of loss and pain mm -hmm. but. You know, we need to think of focus on the end result. Absolutely. Yeah. So for those of you who are still um, still hanging around and, uh, you know, or you've lost hope and you say, well, there's no way a church is going to change. Uh, my question to you is, what are you doing about it? Right. Um, because running away with your tail between your legs is not the right answer. I promise you that. Uh, we have too many people who uh, who run away and, and don't do anything to stand up. Imagine if we had done that. Imagine that. Can't, yeah, can't we got imagine, this horrific yeah. allegation yes. against my dad. Imagine if we had said, well, mm -hmm. you know what? That makes sense. He's in the church. The church is corrupt. Mm -hmm. We're just going to walk away from it. Yeah. Can you imagine no, if we hadn't we dug our heels yeah, in right. and right. stood up and did the right, right thing? And we saw that through to the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, if if we're not willing to do that, then... There probably I think is we no, need to ask ourselves no the question that you posed at the beginning of this podcast. 
what do I stand for? Mm -hmm. What do I stand for? And what am I doing about it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, okay. for sure. Good yeah, questions. so yeah. So when we do that, yeah, I I I I think great things are going to happen. So, um thank you guys for tuning into this episode. And we um are hopefully going to have a pretty cool surprise for next week. So, I'll I'm just leave it at that. I'm excited about it. I'll I'm leave not it at that. Say a word. Hope um, it happens. Yeah. All right, thanks for tuning into this episode. We'll catch you next round. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. A special thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. Please help us get the word out by searching for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. Please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the rewards our patrons receive.